Now it's time to look at a non-zero index. So I'm just going to go to one. Let's not get too crazy. Just go up by one. And now when I run it, you're going to see one get printed and uh, of course the element get printed. So it's going to print add one coffee. So I want coffee to be between oatmeal and strawberries. All right, so let's go back to here. I'm going to erase these arrows. We're going to do something slightly different. We're not going to put coffee at the beginning anymore. I want to put coffee between these two nodes. How in the world do we do that? It's actually really similar to what we just did. What we just did is modify this arrow, or I should say we modified head to point to coffee. And so instead of thinking about that head arrow, what we're going to do is think about that arrow. It's probably a good time to write indexes, indices, zero, one, two, three. Pay very close attention. We're operating at index one, which means we're really moving this node over. However, the way we do that is by modifying the arrow on the previous node. So that's a little bit tricky. It's kind of weird. We're going to with index one, we're actually going to modify node at index zero. And what are we going to do? We're going to make a new node. We need to point to the new node and have that new node point to where oatmeal used to point. So that's what we need to do. We can do it in one line if we're careful. So I need to make a new node just like before. So where are we? My link list. If index equals equals one, uh, we're going to have a loop in the future, but we're just doing this very carefully one thing at a time. This is a good starting point. So let's go ahead and bring that down. All right. So we're not changing head. We're doing head dot next. And what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to call, I'm going to make a variable called previous node. And it's going to start out at head. So we're going to build a new node. Now remember this previous node points to head because oatmeal or the node that head points to is the actual node that we have to modify the next attribute of. So head.next is actually referring to this arrow right here. So previous node is referring to now oatmeal. So let's label that. Previous node, command handwriting. Hi, there's not even an H in that word. Previous node is going to point to oatmeal. All right. So what I need to do is set the previous node next, this arrow, to point to the new node. So previous node is head. So this is previous node dot next equals the new node. Now the new node's got the right data, the right element in it, but of course the arrow right here is, is important where this goes. Let's just leave it right here at head and uh, have some fun. It may not be that fun. We'll find out in a minute here. So let's just redo these arrows. So previous node is going to point to oatmeal. And then what did I do next? So the previous node is going to point to the old, the original head, which is oatmeal. Uh, then I'll build a new node. And what is the new nodes next going to be? It's going to be head. So let's look at what that actually looks like. So the new nodes next is going to be head, which means it's actually going to point back here. And then what did I do? So that's what creating this node is going to do. And then the previous nodes next is going to point to the new node. So the previous node, it's next, it's arrow is going to point to the new node. So it's no longer going to point here. It's going to point to the new node. 
And this is going to create a fun problem. Hopefully this will print out nicely. What's the problem going to be? Well, head's still going to point to the original thing. That's fine, which is oatmeal. And then it's going to be coffee. What's next? Oatmeal. What's next? Coffee. Oatmeal, coffee, oatmeal, coffee. It's a lot of oatmeal and coffee. Hopefully it'll print out nicely. So this should create an infinite loop. Not on the add, but on the two string. Oh, perfect, here we go. So we're not gonna see any output, but it does say one task running, and it did print out what it was doing. Uh, I should have finished the add method, but after the add, what we don't see, so here's, we saw this print out, that's, that caused this output, but there's nothing afterwards because this is actually the line that's causing the problem. It's the two string method is looping forever. So we created an infinite loop, even though it's not obvious. Hit stop. Yes, I want to stop. Uh, we could put a quick print inside two string. I'll just do it inside the for loop. Sout. We'll just put the uh, current data in there. That'll be good enough. We're going to delete this uh, print statement later, but I just want to see the output of what's actually happening. So it should just keep printing the data over and over and over again. There may be an issue where it doesn't flush the output buffer. Okay, it did. Good. So you can see oatmeal coffee, oatmeal coffee, oatmeal coffee. All right, so that's the, obviously it's not what we want. I'm going to take that back out. So let's go back to add and let's make this work. So... I do want coffee to point to something, but in this case, not oatmeal. I want coffee to point to that right there. So how do we do that? So it's the next of the new node needs to point to where previous node used to point to. So that's tricky. And let's think about the code here. So the new node shouldn't be pointing to head, it should be pointing to previous nodes next. There we go. And we'll run this. Eventually, see the output. Oh, look at that. Oatmeal. Coffee in position one, index one, and then we still got all the rest. Didn't lose anything. That's fantastic. It works for index one. I could do something similar for index two, but then I'll have to do previous node equals head.next, and then it should all work. But that's unreasonable because you can't just do it for every index. Uh, eventually, if I want to work for index 700 in a very large linked list, I'm not going to put 700 if statements in. That is not an exercise you should ever think about doing. So how are we gonna do it for general indexes that are not zero? So here's where we're gonna use the get node. So we have that get node method somewhere up here, get node, and it's gonna return the node at index. We really want the previous node, so what we're gonna do is use index minus one. So instead of setting the previous node to be head, it's get node, and this is going to take an int in the index. But I don't want to get the node we want to add. Let's see. If we want to add at position one, I don't want to get this node here. I want to get the node before it. So I actually want to get the node at index zero. So that's why I'm going to put an index minus one here. So that's the previous node, and then I think this should work right here. So another reason I use previous node and not head is so right now that this became uh, basically trivial once we got the right previous node. 
So let's run it again and hopefully if our get node works correctly and points to the initial, uh, should be okay. All right, there we go. Oatmeal's first coffee is in uh, index one, so we're good, it worked at index one. All right, we're ready to test index two. I don't know if it's gonna work, got my fingers crossed, so let's go and run it. I didn't change any of the code over in linked list, only the test code right now. All right, Houston, we have a problem. I don't see coffee anywhere in here. All right, not good. Why did I not see it in there? Think about why I did not see it in there. It's not because of this line here. This right here, it only runs if index is one. So let's just remove the if statement and just let it go. So I'm not checking anything about the index now. It's either zero or it's not, and let's run it. I know the index value is two, which is valid. We're gonna test some invalid ones and see what happens. We're gonna really only test the valid ones first, then we'll try to make it work, then we'll break it. All right, position zero, position one, coffee is in the right place, burger coleslaw, ah, this is fantastic. So that works at position index two. Let's go to three. Hopefully it puts it at position three correctly. I have a feeling it will work. All right, index zero, one, two, coffee's in. Index three, fantastic. I'm a little more worried about index four because that's what we call an edge case. Uh, and this would be boundary testing. We're testing the largest valid index. So if I use index four, I think it should go coleslaw and then coffee when I run it. That's my expectation. We'll see what happens, but this could be slightly different because we're dealing with the end of the link list and the, uh, oh, fantastic, come on. Here we go. Uh, we're way over here, and my only concern is this is fundamentally different than the other cases, but it may still work. Let's go and run it. We got index four, good. Here we go. Look at that. Original. Coffee at index four, zero, one, two, three. So coffee's at index four. All right, great. So this works. Uh, let's just retest index zero. I didn't change any of that part of the code, but I did change that method overall. Just retest to make sure it still works. It should. While we're waiting for this, uh, let's look at the add method. It's tempting. Oh, perfect. Here we go. All right, so what happened? Somewhere in here, you gotta scroll to the top where the uh, first error message came out. All right, index out of bounds exception. Why in the world is it using index equal to negative one? Well, well, first of all, that is our line 55. That's where that exception was thrown. And this is, we wrote this here. We should not be getting a node at a negative index. So if index is less than zero, that's not good. We should be throwing an index out of bounds exception. So I'm very okay with the exception getting thrown. I'm gonna click on the next line down, which is where this line of code was called from, or I should say it's where this get node method was called from. You probably know exactly where we're gonna go because we just wrote that. Let's think about this. If index is zero, this worked 
But what should we be doing after this line? We shouldn't be doing anything. We should be done. So I'm going to put a return. So we should be returning and not doing anything else. But if I return, I got to increment size before I return. So I'm going to need to put that right here. And I think we should be OK at this point. See, hey, great idea, check index 0. I thought it would work. I was wrong. I was thinking that this was still inside the if statement. I'm also not printing out size, so I'm not really paying attention if the size is working, is updating correctly or not. Uh, I don't want to worry about that right now. There's plenty of other things to worry about. All right, what in the world? Okay, yeah, we add at position zero, zero. Okay, it looks all right. Got five elements, and the initial is coffee. Great. So zero works. Uh, we tested uh, one through four. Now we're going to test bad ones. Negative one. This should not work. And we got a little preview of what might happen when index is negative. And let's see, exception, index out of bounds. Now, this is slightly misleading. But let's look and see where that came from. Came from, of course, the throw right here, which came from this. Now, it did use index minus 1, so that's a little bit tricky. Uh, the error message doesn't really match. There should be an error, but it should be negative 1, not negative 2. Uh, so it might be good to check index before we get uh, call the get node. Uh, but I'm not going to worry about that specifically right now. Uh, we'll clean this up in a, in a future video. I just want to test the bad indexes right now. So if I did negative 2, it would also fail. Let's try 5. 4 was valid. 5 is not. Let's run this. And we should see good index out of bounds. All right, again, our print, uh, or I shouldn't say the print, the uh, index out of bounds exception, that message that we made, here's that message that we made printing out right here. And this index, it'd be nice if this one said five, and the previous one that we ran said negative one. Uh, and we'll fix that in a minute. But I just want you to see what happens when you create exceptions, or when you cause an exception to be created intentionally. And this is exactly what happens. So we'll make this index more uh, cleaner, and also we'll start to catch uh, these exceptions and handle them.